Is that all right? <laughs> I get I get I get kind of fired up lately, you know, just reading my Bible and, and just seeing what's to come. If you have your Bible, look at this. Here's a prophecy update. Chapter 16 of Revelation, the book of Revelation, the Revelation of John, to the church. We're the church. Say, we're the church. We are the church. Chapter 16, verse 16. 16, 16. Easy to remember, right? Revelation 16, 16. Remember that. Very important verse, something you, you need to pay attention to for the rest of your life here on the planet because everything is moving toward verse 16. Everything is coming that way. It's, it's, there's a, a war that's coming. Call it World War III, whatever. I think of World War I, Israel wasn't birthed yet. World War II, Israel wasn't birthed yet. You really see the possibility of World War III. And who do you think it's going to be about? Israel. It's all about, listen, minus Israel out of the news and, 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 and really just act like they never became a nation. Me personally, of course, it's what I know now, right? But I question the Word of God, the validity of the Word of God. Because it's all about, this, this is a story about Israel. It's a story about the Jewish people. And we get blessed because in the New Testament, because of Jesus, we get grafted in and become spiritual Jews. Everyone want to say Jews. Jews. We're Jews. We're spiritual Jews. We should be. We ought to be proud of that. Glory to God. But look what's happening around the planet. The peoples of the, of the nations all over the earth are coming against who? Israel. Wow. I, I, I mean, to me, it's, it's almost like I thought we were way beyond that, especially with all the, you know, uh, Me Too movement and, and, you know, all the correctness, all the other things and, and tolerance and inclusion. Oh, my goodness. Has the left crammed inclusion down our throat? And now they're not inclusive. <laughs> Suddenly, the left, oh, no, we hate Israel. We have to kill them. Can't we kill them. What in the world has happened to our planet? It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit of deception. And if you want to stay clear of the spirit of deception, stay close to Jesus. Stay full of the Holy Spirit. And God, what God promised Abraham in Genesis 12, those that bless you, I'll bless. Those that curse you, those that curse you, I'll curse. I'll curse. Now, you, you're lucky because he's talking about nations and not people. But people become part of nations, and they can take on the, the characteristics of that nation. They can become like Hamas. They're cursed. Yeah. The group Hamas is cursed. But thank God, even, woo, glory to God. God's so good. So good. Okay. If you've been watching so the news, you've been seeing the son of the founder of Hamas that is a born-again Christian and totally against Hamas. And he says of his own family, they need to be annihilated. Why? Because unless they repent, they have to die for those works that they're doing. It's evil. Just as the Nazis had to be held accountable. And they've been held accountable even till this day. If there was a, a, anyone that was involved with, with the Nazi regime and oppression of the Jews and the killing of the Jews, they're still being hunted today, today. And suddenly, we have this anti-Semitism, I get it, uh, this hatred, this anger, this unrational hate. Unrational. It's not rational. There's nothing rational about it, especially when it's coming out of the left. Because it's like, hey, aren't you guys, you trying to make us be inclusive with everything, including men in the bathroom with women. Include everybody, everybody, inclusive, inclusive, except for the Jews. What happened to the inclusion? What happened to equality? Right. All of a sudden, they don't get what, it. What happened to LGBTQTFUQRZ? What happened? Put a J in there. Yeah. Right? Right. No. No, instead they put an H in there and, and Hamas gets to join them. And isn't it something? The crowd of people that show up at these pro protests, all the gay activists show up. The Black Lives Matter show up. All, all the, the uh, what were they called, the, the coming against the 1%, they show up. 
It's all the same players. They're all on the same payroll, I think. That'll make you, th yeah, and there's a lot to that too. But look at Revelation 16, 16. And now he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Arm, Armageddon. Armageddon. Uh, if you look at that, if you have a cross-reference, it says uh, literally it's in Megiddo. It's called Megiddo. Janice and I have been there, and I, I believe on, we were on Mount Carmel, right, where Elijah called down fire. Yeah. That's why I had to ask Siri to make sure I was on the right mountain. Yeah. We were on the, mount, <laughs> we were on the mount, mount Carmel, and Mount Carmel looks over the valley of Megiddo. Yeah. And we stood. Oh, ooh, I, get, I get goosebumps thinking yeah, about it good. because... This is the holy word of God. This book is real. These words are real. They're not penned by man. They're breathed by God. And if you don't believe it, you just start reading it and something will blow on you. <laughs> the breath of God will get in you. Yeah. That's how it got in me. I started trying to prove this thing wasn't right. Uh, man, what? I, I read this thing. I'm not afraid to read the Bible. And I read it's right, it's right, it's right. Yeah. We're coming to this place of, we, to this generation, like no other generation, you're going to have to prove this book. You're going to have to prove it by knowing just a little bit of prophecy. All you have to know is Israel. Israel and Jerusalem, there you go, you're, you're equipped. We've got to know this book. We've got to know the prophecies of this book because the prophecies prove the book. Right. Israel proves the book. Right. You're not going to destroy the Jews. It proves the book. Right. You can try for now, or Jesus comes, and the Jewish people will be here. Right. But now, suddenly, in our generation, in our time, in our day, in our hour, this is becoming the greatest sign to the world. Those that are filled with hate, they tend toward hate. Those that are looking for love, they're waking up. Right. Those that are really looking for, you know, what? Truth. A true euphoria, a true uh, whatever uh, they call when everything is all good. You know, this, this utopia. utopia. Looking for some kind of utopia, right? Man, the valley of Armageddon, the valley of Megiddo is like a magnet. And it's drawing all the nations of the earth against Israel. And they're going to gather one day China along with Pakistan, Afghanistan, and kings of the east are going to come across the U U river Euphrates. Russia aligned with, and, he, and you already see the alignment, Iran, Iraq, uh, Turkey, Libya, uh, uh, Lebanon, excuse me, Libya down, L Lebanon, uh, Syria, same players, right? Right. They're all coming. They're all coming. They're gonna, we're we're going to get those Jews, and they're going to give the Palestinians up that land, and they're going to have Jerusalem as their capital. And that will be, right now, the sticking point of peace between, between Israel and Hamas is Jerusalem. The sticking point of peace between all the other Arab nations in Israel is Jerusalem. If you give the Palestinian statehood, which, like, if you're so concerned about the Palestinians, Egypt, why don't you give them a little slice of land? You got a lot. H how about you, Saudi Arabia? Give them a little bit, right? How about all these other great big Arab nations? Go give them a little slice of land. No, they're trying to take the slice that belongs to Israel. And, and, and that one little part, which is technically where the, the Philistines always came up from and always came out of, that, that, that the same problems. It's the same problems, which proves the word of God. Now, we, we need to be equipped. We need to boldly tell people, no, these are the last days. No, Jesus is coming soon, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Israel's here, because Jewish people are here, because of this new hate that is rounded up. This is unnatural hate. This is unnatural opposition. This is, this is not even reasonable. Right, right. Well, it's not reasonable when it's concerning Jerusalem. And if you look in Zechariah, which I, I was going to have you look there too. Look at Zechariah. You saw that in Revelation. They're going to gather in the valley of Megiddo, Armageddon. And look at Zechariah. Mm, 
let's go to chapter 12. Let's go, yeah, chapter 12. And, and then look at verse 11. And in that day, there shall be great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of whoever in the valley of what? Megiddon, or translated Armageddon, Megiddo. There's going to be a gathering. And again, back up and you see this war that's coming against who? Jerusalem, because, uh, because of Jerusalem. And the nations of the earth gathered against Jerusalem. Look at verse 3 in Zechariah 12. And in that day, the, God said, I'll make Jerusalem. Say Jerusalem. And again, if you say Israel or Palestinian statehood or river from the sea or all that, this is what you're talking about. You're, I want to wipe out all of Israel. Jerusalem no longer belongs to the Jewish people. And now belongs to the Arab nations and Arab people. And another thing that was a very a big revelation to me last week is that all the other nations that are, are and including ours, that are emotionally tied in, and, and, and this is their main thing, is Palestinian resistance, right? We're, we're standing up for the Palestinian resistance. We're standing up for the Palest Palestinian people. We're standing up for Hamas. We're standing up, and, it's, and again, it's like they forgot what happened. You know, like these guys came over the wall on little jet or little parachute things, the sky gl gliders with machine guns, just shooting randomly, killing people, babies, women. The, the atrocities that have been committed should cause the people of the world to go, well, yeah, get them, right? There, there was less opposition to us going after uh, Al-Qaeda than there is uh, Israel going after Hamas. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. What's caused all this? Verse 3, that day I'll make Jerusalem a, a burdensome stone. Uh, 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 verse 2, I'm sorry. Behold, I'll make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. See that word trembling? If you have a cross-reference Bible, it says drunkenness or reeling. Or I like to say it, this just makes people disillusional. Delusional. They're, they're just completely delusional. Why? They, they, took, they took a sip of this, this, this poisonous drink of society and, and they bought in that Hamas is the suppressed people group that need to be set free, and now there's no rationale. They, they don't, they, they, it's like they can't hear. Israel keeps telling the stories over and over again because this, this is not their first rodeo. They know what people do. They forget what happens. They forget the atrocities. When did the, earth, uh, the world even gather and allow Israel to rise up as a people and have a nation after six million got exterminated? Right. It, it Finally, you would have thought you'd got alarmed after the first million, but it took six million. And th this nation of Israel and the people of Jerusalem again is making the, the world that is not, is not spiritually aware, the world that is not given to a lick of common sense, they're drinking of this cup of trembling. And this thing has polluted their mind, their heart, and suddenly even good people are becoming the haters of, of the Jews. And the haters of Israel. Wow. Amazing. What an amazing time. And here we are. We live in this moment. We live in this day, in this hour. Think about it. Zechariah talked about people being ga gathered together, together in the valley of Armageddon. Revelation 16, 16 tells us about a battle that would take place in the valley of Armageddon. And it will involve all the key nations of the world. And those key nations are going to be struck down. What's going to stop the arrogance of a Vladimir Putin? Jesus. What's going to stop the arrogance of the, of the Iranian mullahs and, and, and Ayatollah? Jesus. What's going to stop the hate and, and the aspirations of China wanting to dominate the world? Jesus. Jesus is going to deal with all this. Yeah, and I'm hoping, and no, I'm not hoping, I'm, I, I am believing, I will be behind the guy on the white horse. We're going to be a part of that army that rides into where? The Valley of Armageddon. Right. It all, it, there, again, it's all this, this draw toward Armageddon. And this is our hour to let people know, here, it's written. 
It's written right here. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you the promise of Israel. Let me show you the promise of God. Let me, let me show you that those that bless Israel will be blessed and those that curse Israel will be cursed, not just from the Bible. The Bible said it, but now I'll show you history. I'll show you the reality yeah. of it for 3,000 plus years. That if you come against Israel, you're going you're gonna to get your chops busted. Your empire is going to get destroyed. Whoever you are, I don't care if you're Babylon. I don't care if it's the Grecian Empire. I don't care who it is. You come against Israel and you come specifically uh, occupy Jerusalem, you're toast. Your empire is toast. Your kingdom is toast. Why? Because that's God's land. And God's proven it through mighty signs, wonders, and miracles right now in our day and hour like never before. Get your voice. Get bold. I, I, I promise you, <clears throat> I'm going to write out kind of like a simple little bulletin point pamphlet for people to witness off of. You know, it, it help you witness. And you give it to people too. But uh, a little bit more than what I did in the Signs of the End Time pamphlets that I've done. But have a little of that too so we scare the hell out of them first. So we get heaven in them. Heaven, I'm, come on now. Don't, don't get religious on me. <clears throat> anyway, we want to get hell out and get heaven in. But I want to write something that, that literally will, you know, try to get people's attention. And again, part of the conclusion of what happens in the Valley of Armageddon is a nuclear war happens, a, a nuclear blast takes place. How many know right now, how many know the first nuke that goes off, it changes everything? For sure. We're on the edge. We're on the edge. Who's going to do it first? I predict it'll be Israel. Because after they set a nuke off and destroy part of Tehran and, and Iran, uh, uh, the world will really be coming after them, right? And then they'll have to, have to have a need of world peace before another nuke gets set off. That's, my, that's kind of what I think. That's more of a prediction than a prophecy. I'm not prophesying. <laughs> Glory to God. But we're right on this edge. We're right on this, this time. And I would just, as we're praying, as we're worshiping, I'm just like, God, wow, look at this. Boom. The, the words of the page just jumping off. Right? This is it. This is it. This yeah, is this the is last it. days that we've talked about. Yeah, this, this, is this is the book of Revelation yeah. unfolding. The, yeah. These are all the things, yeah. all the promises of God starting to come into alignment and fulfillment, both yeah. on the negative and the positive. Yes. The alignment of nations yes. that God said would be in the last days. And why are these things prophesied? There's no other religion. I, 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 if, I, if this is not true, let me know. There's no other religion that... That, that has prophetic prophecy that backs it up. Chapter after chapter after chapter, this is predicting thousands of years Central after it was century. written. Right. Thousands. Think about just the prediction Praise of nuclear God. war in Zechariah. I know. 2,500, is that about 2,500 years? I don't know. That's a long time. How, how'd, they, how'd they know? God. God showed them. There'll come a day. There'll come a day because of people coming after Israel and become a, coming after Jerusalem. There'll come a day that people, their flesh will, because a plague's going to come. What is the plague? The plague will cause their flesh to melt off their bones as they stand on their feet. That's what Zechariah said. It'll cause their flesh to just fall off their bones as they stand on their feet. Try being a theologian back before the 1945. How, what? What? How, how in the world? What? Do we have anything okay. like that? Do we have a weapon like that? Do we have, now we do. Not only the atomic bomb, the, the neutron bomb, right? Is that correct? Neutron bomb. Most powerful weapon bomb known to man. And it, people's flesh will melt off their bones as they stand on their feet. And then Hollywood gave us a little, you know, picture of it in the Terminator just to let us know. And... Terminator's not too far off either, is it? No. Talk about artificial intelligence. <laughs> what? I mean, what? Wow. wow. Wow, what a day, what an hour we live in, and what a day to get the lost attention. So pray for me as I put something together. I, I want it to be, you know, eye-catching and useful. I don't want to just write something that doesn't get used. Uh, so praise the Lord. I do that with my, my memoirs. You know, I, I write. I got a lot of things that I've written. Uh, after I die, or if you're left behind, you can read it. Anyway, <laughs> praise the Lord. 
Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. So pray what's our position? Again, Lord. Pray. Yes. Pray. What's our position? Pray. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Send me. Yes. I promise you, already is happening, and it will happen greater and greater. Divine appointment after divine appointment, conversation after conversation, Israel comes up, the Jewish people come up. God will give you wisdom. If you're sitting with Palestinians, be chill, cool. S get it in real nice. Get it in, sneak it in, right? Get it in spiritual. Don't, don't take the natural course because you'll lose the fight. You've got to talk about the spiritual things. Amen. And we've had a lot of uh, Palestinian friends over the years and still do. Uh, her and her husband, and, 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 and uh, well, they're Iranian, uh, Fred and Susan, Iranian, but uh, our Palestinian friends, uh, Mar Marlene. Marlene, and her husband, I wish I remember his, uh, he, but he is Palestinian, I'm from the Palestinian, he worked with uh, uh, Yasser Arafat, he, he was a part of uh, being on committees and stuff. And so I, I loved talking with him. It, it was fascinating, you know. And, of course, uh, I didn't get too deep with Yasser and what have you. But I said, but look at history. Look what God does to protect Israel. It doesn't mean he doesn't love the Palestinian people. He loves the Palestinian people. He loves you. Loves us too. You're not even close to being Arab or Palestinian or anything else. And God still loves you. Thank Gives you, you a path in. And, and, and that... That hate that I could see that was almost bred in him, his love for Jesus has overwhelmed it. Yeah, that's right. we sure it, it took it over. Amen. So we pray for the Palestinians. Pray that for them as a people and tell them, listen, you've got something a lot better coming than that little slice of land in Israel. You know, and, and most of that land, it's all desert anyway. It doesn't flourish unless the Jews have it. The Arabs have tried and tried and tried to get that land to produce, and they can't get a thing to produce. And Israel, right in the middle of all of it, produces, outproduces everybody. Anybody been to Israel, you'll know. You see, they've got crops everywhere. Yeah. They don't have a problem with water. Every other Arab nation, every other nation in that entire, everywhere, Russia, all of them, they all have an issue with water. Israel is the master of water. Why? They're God's chosen people. The blessing of God's on them. You don't have to look very far to see that the blessing is of God is on them. And if that blessing is there, and if this is true, then the Bible's true. And if the Bible's true, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you better get saved. If you're not saved, if you're away from God, if you're a prodigal, it's time to get home, get right with God. This book is coming to pass in lightning speed like never before. Wars and rumors of wars, my prediction is that's all we'll see. That's all we'll see until the rapture and then after the rapture, see, if, if, if we start seeing world peace, if we see a leader raise up and, and begin to negotiate peace with Israel and all its Arab nations and all the other haters, then we'll know that we didn't have a pre-tribulation rapture or we missed it. And now we're in the tribulation. That, that's, that, that's cool. I'm cool with that. I'll go with the mid-trib. Hey, man, I'm cool with the mid-trib. Because it didn't get crazy till after the mid-trib. After three and a half years in, then all hell begins to come. The plagues, the vials that are poured out on humanity. The sixth vial uh, in Revelation is again the gathering of China and the kings of the east coming over the river Euphrates. That's part of that sixth vial being poured out on man. Wow. And here we are. We Here's, here's, let's play some scenarios. It all calms down. Everything's cool again. You know, Israel's back at peace. Its Arab neighbor, neighbors are not threatened to annihilate them and wipe them off the face of the map. And it just kind of just all kind of calms down. Does anybody think that will happen, first of all? And if it does, it'll erupt again. It's been fairly calm for the couple, last couple years. Uh, I don't know what all that President Trump did, but he did do something that moved the, the Arab nations and Israel closer. The Abraham Accord did something. You could see the fruit of it. That's kind of on hold right now and kind of blown apart. But 
if you see that happen, then again, then we, our theology is wrong or we're a bunch of sinners and we miss the rapture, <laughs> right? Well, good news is there's a mid-trib rapture. Amen. And if you don't make that one, well, just hang on until the end. Don't, don't take the mark and probably going to get your head cut off, but you'll make it. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, glory to God. We're, we're, we're in this sliver of time. Yes, we are. Is it days? Is it weeks? Is it months? Is it a window of two or three or four years? I don't know. I don't know what, how close it is, but I do know that it, this is the season. I say that things will not calm down. They'll keep on going. This will spill over again and again. It's not going to just be Israel, Battle of Moss, and finally going to call it a ceasefire, and it's all going to be chilled again. No, I, I say this is going to stay this way until three and a half years into the tribulation where there is finally a peace treaty signed, and I think part of that is going to be because of nuclear war that breaks out or a, a nuclear attack that completely freaks people out because you start seeing, you know, imagine if we have the cameras that could have been at uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Wow. You think that would traumatize the planet? Watching some of that? Watching that in real time as, as the cameras go off, as the nuke hit, as the people's are just being dissolved in front of you? Do you think that would shock the world? It's going to shock the world, I'm telling you. The first nuke that goes off, the first, the first attack with a nuclear, no matter what it is, the world's going to completely just freak out, and it's going to change everything again, like 9-11 changed everything, like October 7th changed everything. October 7th accelerated an a, a, a issue that has been simmering for 3,000-plus years, but has really been simmering since 1948 from the time of 1948, and then even amped up in 1967 when Israel took back control of Jerusalem and the West Bank and, a, and, and the Gaza and a few other stragglers that they took on. They've since then given up part of that, but uh, they kicked tail in 67. It was a miracle fight. It was a miracle war. This war, this is the war that catapults us to a place of all kinds of wars, you're seeing it. You're seeing it take place right in front of you. And the only answer is Jesus Christ. Yes. He is. You, you can Allah all you want. You can Allah Akbar. You can do whatever you want. I'm telling you, it's Jesus Christ. And the only hope for man is crying out on that name. And when people get desperate, they cry out on that name. Yes. So, Father, we pray for the people in Israel. We pray for the people in Gaza. We pray, Lord, let your spirit fall, and may they cry out to Jesus Christ, the Lord. Lord, show yourself real in the midst of this fighting, in the midst of, of all these things that are happening that I believe are signs. God, pour out your glory. May this great harvest that has been prophesied by men of God for decades, billions coming into the kingdom, I thank you, Lord. We're right on the edge of it. We'll be a part of it. So, oh, we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep pressing in. We're going to keep believing that our God is God. This Bible is real, and we don't have to back down to anybody. It's showing itself real right in front of everyone's face, right on the evening news every night. That's right. The Syrians are still there. <laughs> They're still coming out of Lebanon. They're still coming out of Jordan. They're still coming out of Persia. The, the, the attack, attacks are still coming. They're still the same people, the same enemies. But it's going to be final. It's going to be settled once and for all. Coming soon in the valley of Armageddon. Lord, I thank you. Let people's eyes be open. Let this generation see that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I didn't mean to go that long. I kind of get in a trance when I start talking about the end times. Just kind of got sucked out right there. Amen. Went into a, to another dimension. I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body, as Paul said. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I hope you are. Uh, and, and, and this is a great lesson because, 
Yes, we'll take an offering. Amen. That's what we can do. Glory to God. Offering envelopes are coming your way. Uh, what, we're, what we're teaching on on the Lord's Prayer, you know, thank God. It's a, it's a, a six-stanza prayer, and it's real easy to memorize. But it's not the memorization of it. Right. It's the revelation. Right. And if you get the revelation of the Lord's Prayer, you have a prayer foundation to use no matter where you are, what pressure you're under. If you are stuck in the middle of Gaza in one of those hospitals in a tunnel, this prayer will save you. This prayer will help you. This prayer will preserve you and those around you. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. You hear the authority in that stanza. Yes. My Father, my God, I know God. I'm not just talking to anyone. I'm talking to my father, daddy. He is in heaven. He, and art in heaven, that means the highest position, right? Doesn't that mean the highest position? Art, art, art in heaven, highest position. There's no God bigger than my God. <laughs> there, there's no God bigger than my God. Amen. Keith Moore made up a song on that as Brother Hagin was preaching. Yeah, there ain't no God bigger than my God. Man, we had a time. Glory to God. And there isn't. No God bigger than my God. Glory to God. Amen. And then this second stanza, your kingdom come, your will be done. Pray it like we've tried to teach it. Come, kingdom of God, be done, will of God. Yes, Lord. Do we have the authority to say that? Yes, yes, we do. Do we have the right to say that? Yes. Come. Come, kingdom of God. Be done, will of yes, God yes. in Israel, in the Jewish people. Yes, Lord. Come, kingdom of God, righteousness, come, peace, and joy. Be, be done in me, my family, my children, my grandchildren. Righteousness, peace, and joy reign in all of them. Yes, Come, Lord. kingdom of God, be done, will of God. I have the right to do that because of that one stanza. Thy kingdom come. And I can pray it religiously because I can hear it both forward and backwards now. Did you get that? Yes. It, it took me a long time because when I prayed that, I was conditioned to, that's passive. Thy kingdom come, that's passive. I'm waiting. Thy kingdom come. Yes. Not come, thy kingdom what? You mean I'm saying come instead of waiting for it to come? That, that takes a renewal of mind. Thy kingdom come. Come, kingdom of God. Yes. Be done, will of God. Yes, in my life. And sometimes I don't know the total will of God, but when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I pray the perfect will of God. That's right. So when I'm praying over Joe Biden, when I'm praying, I, I, I really over Joe Biden. I'm praying over the President of the United States. When I pray over him, I pray more in tongues than in the natural because I can't pray good things in the natural because I, I, I think this is the worst president ever, ever, ever in the history of America, of the United States, of the world. <laughs> Nobody ha has, has caused more damage and more harm than this man and his family. And, and he needs to be taken out of power. So, see, that's, my, that's, that's what I think. So if I'm going to pray any good over President Joe Biden, I'm going to have to pray in tongues. Right. I'm glad Is anybody with me? I, you know, I mean, I can pray in the natural. I can pray, God, protect him. Save, save him. Please save him. Save him. Now, Jesus, save him. Quick. Uh, protect his wife, his children, his grandchildren. Uh, help Hunter repent, you know. And, and, and just, Lord, bless him, protect him. That's about as good as I can do in the natural. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done over the Biden family. I don't know what's going on. Maybe God's going to save him. Maybe he's going to have a revelation, an epiphany, yeah. a, a 180. I hope it's not a 360, but a 180, because 360, he'd be back where he started. <laughs> and that's probably what happened. That's what he does a lot, 360s. He, he's not sure where okay, he's good. going. Okay, go ahead. What? What? I'm praying for him, though. I'm praying for him. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You're a great, mighty God. Now come, kingdom of God. Be done, will of God. In my generation, in my family, in my children. 
and my grandchildren. But Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And then we'll teach on this next week and give us this day, our daily bread. Notice the daily bread, not weekly, not monthly. Did you have your daily bread today? I did. I was, I'm, I'm blessed. I had something to, have my daily bread today was a little protein drink. I had daily bread. God provided daily bread today. I get through here. I'm sure we're going to have lunch somewhere. Home, we got soup, cornbread. We got daily bread. We're blessed. I mean, no, there's a lot of people in Gaza right now don't have any daily bread. Right. Children don't have daily bread. They start praying to the God, the one and true God, not Allah, not Buddha, the great Jehovah God, the great I Am. And they'll pray to Him in the name of Jesus. He'll provide their daily bread. Because I've never seen, you have to go against the Word of God. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed out begging bread. God's good takes care of daily bread. Yes, he does. Daily needs. Daily Amen. Needs. So, Father, since we didn't teach it, we pray it. Give us this day Give our daily day bread, our daily, bread Lord. Our daily provision. Thank you, Lord, for our house, yes. shelter, a room to sleep in, a bed, a car to drive, a bike to ride, feet to walk on. Shoes to put on. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Daily yes, bread. Daily bread. Thank you for the daily things you, you provide daily for us. Thank, Thank you, Lord. I, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm an American. I'm, I'm grateful I was born in the USA. I believe there's a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for yes. blessing us with daily provision, yes. daily needs met, yes, gas in our car, food on our table, daily bread. Yes. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Daily Not only do you... Give us daily, but you take care of those, those desires of our heart. You take care of those things that, that we might desire in our life. That, God, you want to bless us. But it all starts with appreciation of daily. Daily. Give us this day our daily bread. And, Jesus, you're the greatest bread that's ever come down from heaven. The bread of heaven. Probably a great time to take communion, wouldn't it? Just eat of the bread. Thank you, Lord, for the bread that was broken, your body, the blood that was spilled. Thank you, Lord. It's because of that we have daily bread. Provision. Praise you. Give you glory. Give you glory. Uh, hallelujah. Hmm. Well, I think I'm supposed to, I've, I've got a lot of things that I've written down. I've been talking the last two months. Pray for me that I, I, I can, if, if I can't put something together that, that is meaningful, I don't want to waste my time on it. But uh, I think I see something that might help people with the end times. So pray for me. Stretch your hands out and just pray for me right now. Father, I, I just receive right now any assignment you might have in writing and explaining in times and in days. Father, I receive right now wisdom, knowledge, a discerning. Lord, you're, you're, let it be written with, with a love, sugar all over it. Not, not with wrath, but with love, but with a, with a love that warns, a love that declares Jesus is Lord and he's coming soon. Yes, Lord. You got to get ready. You gotta get ready, like, like the 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 bridesmaid. The call was made at midnight. Five weren't ready, and five were. Well, I, I bless God. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be one of the ready ones. How about you? I'm gonna have some oil in my lamp. That's why I pray in the Holy Ghost every day. Keep that oil in your lamp. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Oil in your lamp, Jesus in your heart, the Word of God in your mouth. Wrap it all in the love of God. Father, we praise you. Let Palestinians come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Let Jewish people come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Let the heathen of this nation pour out your spirit 
as you said on all flesh. We thank you, Lord, those stupid, dumb kids out in the streets. Lord, pour out your spirit upon them. I know a dictator called them mindless idiots, but they're acting like it. Lord, pour out your glory upon our youth. Pour out your glory on our university campuses, our college camp, as you've been doing, as you've been doing. But let it be on the major campuses. Let there be Jesus marches that rise up that dwarf anything that, that has an anti-Israel march. Jesus marches, love marches, glory marches. God, assemble your people to rise up and proclaim your light and your glory across this nation in public venues, in football stadiums, in baseball stadiums. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Amen. Well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amen. It is. Absolutely. Uh, again, this is a tough generation. They, they've, been, they, they've never been without Google. They, they've never been without being able to get any information of anything they want at any time. And if you can't show them direct evidence, okay, here, here's some scriptural evidence. Boom, 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 boom. I still don't believe. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. What do you think of that? <laughs> you know. Brother Hagin said that signs, wonders, and miracles are, is God's dinner bill to a lost and dying world. That's right. Teal Osborne proved it in all his different crusades. He proved it before he began to walk in the power and signs and wonders and miracles. He could do nothing, zero in the foreign field. He had an encounter with God, and Jesus told him to start laying hands on the sick, proclaim Hebrews 13, 8, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did then, he'll do now. And if he doesn't, you can run us out of town and call us false prophets. And that was T.L. Osborne's message as he went to the heathen of the world and had it up on writing. Said it in boldly. If miracles don't happen like they happen in the Bible, there were false prophets, you can run us out of town. So they brought their lame, they brought their blind, they brought the sickest of the sick, and they got healed. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just shout, do it again. <laughs> Lord. What's that take? I think it takes yes. an outpouring of God mixed with boldness and courage and strength and knowledge of what this book stands for. That's right. Amen. Good things are on the way. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Did we take the offering? We did? Oh, good. Thank you. Appreciate that. We, we, uh, we do, do need to take offering. Amen. Glory to God. Well, be praying this week. Uh, um, and keep your ears open and eyes open. If you're having a divine appointment with somebody, then walk with the wisdom of God. Maybe you know you don't you don't just flash out the hook and you know snag the fish. Put a little right. bait on it. You know, let it float there for a minute. Right. Talk, talk about the things of the world. Talk about the things of, of what's happening. Uh, what's happening with Israel? Somebody is a. Uh, uh, a Hamas sympathizer, ask them why. Why? Why, would, why, why do you, why would you, do, do you think, like you're interviewing one guy there, so they slaughtered women, children, and babies. Didn't you? He said, no, they didn't do that. That was Israel did that. Yeah, but those guys filmed it. <laughs> they filmed their own stuff and aired their own stuff. Hey, check out what we're doing. We know who did it. They got them on film, right? But yet people would deny it even though the facts are straight in front of them just like they deny the Holocaust. Amen? So yeah, yeah. does that mean I'm done? You uh -oh. Quit playing. I, I'm done. I'm done. But again, my, again, the, as I've watched TV and I've watched these protests happening around the world, 
I'm like, well, this is spiritual darkness, this is spiritual blindness, and this is part of Zechariah, the cup of delusion. That's right. it, it, you're coming against Israel, and you're coming against the Jewish people. You're, 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 now you're drinking of a cup, again, King James says cup of... Uh, a, you know what? Well, it, 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 says it, a cu- it actually says a cup of trembling, and then it calls it a burdensome stone, uh-huh. uh, which both of those kind of go together. The cup of trembling, they're drunk, irrational, not thinking right. A burdensome stone means this thing is so heavy on the uh, Arab world, so heavy upon them, we've got to get rid of them. We've got to kill them. We've got to eradicate the Jews. It's a heavy, burdensome stone, but they can't move it. And the harder they try, the more of a burden it is on them. Mm-hmm. It's all happening right here, right now, right in our lifetime. Right and our and, lifetime. and it's, this, is, this is happening. Yeah. Th- this is currently going on in real time. As you turn on the news, you don't, you don't have to watch a lot of it. depends on how you're wired. Uh, I like to watch both CNN and Fox, you know. I find out if there's anything going on with Trump, you act like there's nothing going on in the rest of the world except for Trump on CNN. <laughs> uh, Fox will, will take a tour and go around <laughs> a, a few things. And then there's some news medias that will focus in on what's happening. I find myself, I'm reading uh, the Jerusalem Post and uh, Al Jazeera. Uh, Jerusalem Post, obviously, Jewish news. Al Jazeera, Arab news. And I read it and I, I, I think... There, it's, it's like liberal and conservative again. You know, it's like, how can they see things this way? How can they not see it this way? Uh, it's interesting what's happening. So, I, I don't know. Uh, how do you even pray about some of it? Because some of it is, is going to happen. Some of these things are going to happen. It's like, oh, I just pray that Israel will, will be at peace and never have any more wars. Well, that's praying against the Word of God. Uh, they're going to have war. They're going to have it. The Bible says all the people of the earth are going to gather against them. You can pray about that all you want. It's still going to happen and it's happening. But I pray the people get a revelation and get saved and get out of it. Amen. That was good. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Father, I love you. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. you are Lord. Holy yes, Spirit, you are. without you, we're lost. We have no direction. We need you. Lead us, guide us, teach us, show us things to come, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we hear, we make our hearts available to you. Flow through us, speak through us. Most of all, save the lost, reach the hurting, reach our prodigal sons and daughters. Bring them in in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go out, have a wonderful Sunday. Be a prayer warrior all week long. We'll see you next Sunday. Stop the Lord, and he heard.